Okay, here we go. Peaking day 23. Uh, I'm just gonna do a physique update because I trained legs at the gym and I did not bring the camera and record any of it. However, the next three days are all gonna be arm days, gonna be a gauntlet of arm days, and I'm gonna record the plan to record every one of them. There won't be any more of these uh, physique update. We're gonna have a little chat here. I'm gonna share some insights that I think are gonna help you. I know it's not as exciting as watching me do the exact same fucking arm exercises in the gym, <laughs> but uh, here we are. Anyways, leg day was pretty good. Um, just gonna do a little physique update here. Thing to note, we've got a light right there. So if I, here's a little tip for you guys here. I mean, within reason, if you're right underneath the light, you kind of get like owl eyes. Maybe it's too much, but you can see I mean, I don't even have really, I'm not really lean enough to have like defined abs, but it looks way better if I'm underneath the light, right? The definition of my arms, yeah. If I move back more, I can't tell what it looks like, but I'm pretty sure I don't look as defined. There's not as many shadows on the muscles, but I want to be standing somewhere kind of in the middle, make myself look a little bit sick. But that's something to keep an eye on. A lot of people don't realize. Um, I don't have a pump at all. But if I had a pump and I was standing under a light and I was pointing the camera into the mirror, your physique is going to look insanely more impressive than it would if you were no pump, not underneath a light, with the camera facing directly to you. So it's just something to keep in mind because a lot of, and there's nothing wrong with it, enhancing the way your physique looks and stuff. but just good to be aware some of these people you might follow or look up to or whatever um, their physiques may not be as uh, superhero godly as they appear to be anyways this is the physique I'm at 202 pounds which is the fucking heaviest I've ever been in my life at six foot one um, there's the pythons probably the highlight of the package and uh, some people have asked what I'm doing for back. <clears throat> I wouldn't say that my back is super sick or anything, but uh, I do have some, some back development. And what I've found is that pushing the overhead tricep extensions to the maximum loads up the lats a lot because if you think about it, the lats function is to bring your arm down this way, right? So if you do the opposite of that with your overhead, if you're doing a seated dumbbell triceps extension the lat is being stretched out and if you perform the exercise in a way where you're keeping your shoulders down and you're letting that weight kind of pull you back some i'm getting a big stretch tension on the lats and then i'm pushing the set all the way to failure so the lat and the pec as well a little bit and potentially some of the other smaller muscles in my back are working as stabilizers um, and have seen some growth and for that to fully make sense you have to realize that I'm taking the sets to failure and then I'm doing a lot of drop sets and I'm like maxing the intensity and pushing things in a very extreme way. If you just do an arm day once a week, you know, four or five sets with like medium to high intensity, you're probably not going to see much gains in the rest of your, your upper body or, or anywhere else. Um, yeah, but the pecs are still underdeveloped and my delts probably need some work, but I'm working with what I got, doing the best I can. Um, to grow the kit given the circumstances with the misalignment in my hips because of the broken ankle if you're new here um, led to nerve issues in the left side of my face I have a lot of muscle imbalances I don't know if you can know, tell but the left collarbone is sitting higher than the right one and that's because my left shoulder blade is down rotated downwards too much because my hips are out this way I've made other videos talking a little bit about it. I don't want to go too far into detail there but if you're new here that's why I'm only doing arms and legs. I'm just maxing what I can do. Um, anyways, I know I said I was going to put the fucking measuring tape away, but I'm addicted. Um, and a, something I want to talk about here and a, a point that I'd like to make. I got this fucking mic clipped onto my ear. doesn't feel great. <laughs> no pain, no gain, though, am I right? <laughs> oh, I'm starting to sweat and shit. <laughs> Ooh, okay, um, we're going to do another measurement here. And the 
reason that I'm doing this fucking shit again is because we got a little sliver of growth. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what's going on behind that. And I think that there are some really interesting takeaways that you all will find beneficial. So, and I've measured these fucks enough. I have a pretty consistent method down. All right, now I'm flexing. Everything should be even. At least you can't see right around the back there. There's no tomfoolery. I'm only tomfoolery myself if I'm tomfoolery. And it's over. I don't know if you're going to be able to see. No, there's no fucking light here. You're going to take my word for it, okay? I'm not here to lie. Fuck around. Because ultimately I want cold 18-inch arms flexed. And I'm not going to pretend to have them for YouTube if I don't have them. But now we're at previously 17 and 3 quarters, my last measurement, like a handful of days ago, five days ago or whatever. Now we're in between the 17 and 3 quarters line and 18, which is going to be uh, 17 and 7 eighths. So I gained an eighth of an inch. Fuck you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the reason that I think this is uh, worthy of me making a video and talking about it. I try to make this as succinct as I can, but I tend to ramble, ramble on. Fucking bulking, man. Adding on the meat. Got a little extra meat here. A little fucking meat blanket hanging off the front. Um, what I did recently, changing my split, I talked about it in the previous videos. If you haven't watched them, go watch them if you're interested to find out in more detail. But as I explained, my thought process around training, especially at this point, is that I have to drastically do something different with my training um, to expect results. And those results will come kind of in short bunches when I make big changes to my training. I've sort of noticed this over many years, which is a bit counterintuitive or the opposite of what you hear with just focus on progressive overload, keep progressing the weights, just keep showing up, keep showing up, keep showing up. And although you do have to obviously just keep fucking showing up over and over again, I'm just going to hold on to this because my ear hurts. My little ear fucking hurts. Um, what I've noticed is that I do a concrete change to my training. For example, increase my frequency. Instead of resting three days in between sessions, I go down to two. Or I increase my volume. Instead of doing just five sets in each workout, I bump that up to eight. Or I change my rest times. Instead of resting a minute, now I'm going to rest three minutes or vice versa. Some concrete change like that where the demand on the muscles has def definitively been increased. All of a sudden the workout is 100% harder or the demand on your body is 100% more difficult. You're only, you're reducing your rest times in between the days. You're doing more weight, you're doing more sets, whatever. And the times when I'm just focusing on trying to progress the, the weight or just like giving it everything I got every session and I'm going to just keep up in the intensity, whatever. I just end up seeming like I'm in a plateau for like six months or four months or eight months or whatever. And there isn't actually that like steady linear inc increase. It's like make a big change, boom, growth, and then plateau. And then like get fucking all of a sudden realize it after eight months. Holy shit, I haven't done anything. All right, make a big change, boom, little growth, and then just flat again. And noticing this more recently, like two months ago, after being stuck at 17 and a half inches for like eight months longer, probably, I changed the tempo I was using to do a more fast, explosive tempo that allowed me to progress the weight much more drastically, kind of rapidly. And that added an extra quarter inch, seemingly within a week, two weeks. Like it didn't take, you know, three months. And I'm not adding consistently a quarter inch every three months. And I just keep doing what I'm doing over the whole year and then you just keep building like I just the more time has gone on I'm realizing it just doesn't fucking work like that that's, that's what I'm experiencing and I think this specifically applies if you're more advanced or if you've been training for a while and you're stuck in a plateau so if that's if that's you I think what I'm talking about here could be really beneficial and so with my training recently now that I've been stuck at 17 and three quarters for like the last month month and a half this time I'm like no no, no we're not staying in the same fucking plateau for another six months because I'm doing all the mobility work, I'm stretching out and doing all the fucking rolling and mobility exercises for an hour and a half, and then pushing my ass through these training sessions over and over and over, and I'm putting all this work. Let's out and but and not progressing. I don't want to do that for six months and not get any additional results at this point. So what more extreme thing do I need to do? So adjusting 
my frequency. So before I was training arms, legs, arms, rest, repeat. So I'm training my arms every other day and I'm training my legs with three days rest in between. And now I've changed that to arms, 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 legs, repeat, <laughs> which is way more extreme. And basically I've just gotten rid of that rest day and replaced it with an arm day. So I'm doing arms three days in a row and then I'm hitting legs. And I've done that just one cycle through, okay? So today was legs, but the previous three days I hit arms three days in a row. Each workout was a little bit different. And in the, in the following three days, I'm going to film all three of the workouts so you can see the difference between the three sessions and there's specific reasons why I'm doing each session each way. But even just after doing that for one cycle through three days, and then today was kind of like a recovery day for my arms and I planned to measure and I noticed uh, a one eighth increase after three days. Okay. Whereas I could be stuck in a plateau doing the same thing, just focusing on if I had kept my split the same, just focusing on using this fast explosive tempo, I could stay there for months and you make this, it's a really extreme change, but the takeaway and what I, I want to share with you guys is that I think when you look at your training, I've seen it to be much more powerful to make concrete drastic changes if you want to see growth. And given, of course, this applies to people that are a bit more advanced, a bit more serious, given that you're consistent, you never miss sessions. That's your foundation. None of this fucking matters if you don't do that. But if you're doing that, you've been training for a year, a couple of years, whatever, you're stuck in a plateau. I think the way you should think about it is like, you're clearly not growing. And you look in the mirror and just like admit, like I'm clearly the past fucking six months, year, I'm just stagnated. I know there's a lot of people like this. And if it's because you don't keep showing up consistently, well, then that's what you need to address. But if you are showing up consistently, but you're not improving, I think you need to look at your training and go, okay, like, how do I make it more extreme? If you want it, if you fucking want it bad enough, like for me to do arms three days in a row is like borderline not enjoyable. <laughs> like, I love fucking training, but yeah, I was like, as I was doing that, I was like, this is kind of a bit more like work than like. Every other day, I still am like, I'm juiced up. I get like a day's rest and I come in the gym. I'm like, fucking can't wait to get in there and get my EDM in. <laughs> but with this, it's just like, holy fuck, another arm day, another arm day. Um, but I think this is what it's going to take to uh, get them to 18 inches. I'm so fucking close. And I've learned a lot of things about how my body has responded to all these different um, experimental strategies. And I think that you guys could benefit from kind of listening to what I'm saying or, and trying some of this like similar mentality yourself. So look at your own training and maybe you're not trying to get to 18 inch arms. Your goal is a little different or you're trying to whatever, but if it comes to muscle gain in however, you know, you're just trying to gain muscle all over your body or specifically your chest or whatever your goal is that you should look at your training and, and be like, how should I, how can I change this like dramatically? By reducing a rest day, adding more volume, like what can you do, right? That's not that fucking rocket science. Just look, look at your training and think about it for like 30 minutes. Sit down there. I'm going to just look at what I'm doing, write it all down or whatever, analyze it. Like, what could I do? And something will come to you. Something obvious will come. Okay, let me try this. Let me try that. And if you make these adjustments progressively, you can get to a state where I'm at, where it's like become very extreme. My training routine is very extreme. I don't recommend that people do what I'm doing unless you've been training for a really long time and you really fucking want like the main shit in your life to be about like gaining muscle, then you could take on like some of the exact kind of protocols. But otherwise I think a more distilled version of that is, is like what I'm saying is if you're not consistent, that's number one. None of this shit matters. If you are consistent and you're stuck in a plateau, then make something more difficult. Don't just like do exactly what I'm doing, but look at what your training is and make it do something to make it more difficult. And I've just been doing that for years and years, specifically with the arm training, where now, you know, um, I'm going to say, oh, I did arms three days in a row. And you'll see the sessions in the coming day, like they're pretty fucking serious. It's not like I'm going in there and I'm just doing a few sets of curls, doing a few sets of tries and then leaving. Like it's a pretty fucking full on workout each time. Um, one of the things I've noticed, I'm having tr trouble recovering. Like I'm sleeping a ton. I'm just fucking tired all the time. But I think my body, that's because I'm doing workouts or stimulus for muscle growth where it's actually happening. And so my body's a lot of the extra energy requirement is going towards building more muscle. And I'm just demanding a lot more of my body. But I think, and this is what I've seen in the past, after a week, a couple of weeks, my body will adapt to it. And then it'll become a bit more baseline. 
and I won't be so physically drained from it. Because I've seen that in the past when I was like resting four days in between every arm day and I started to reduce that. At first, I'd get really tired. It seems almost unmanageable. But then a year down the line, I'm resting just one day in between. It's like sustainable. Like I can train arms every other day, like sustainable. Like that feels fine. I don't, I feel like my body's adapted to that over time. So that's enough of a ramble. I don't want to go on for too, too long, but I did want to share that with you guys and show the improvement in the muscle gain that I've seen and how that's happened in literally like four days by doing something different. And I'm not saying that you're going to add like this extreme thing where you're going to add 10 pounds of muscle in a month. Like that shit doesn't exist really unless you're on a whole bunch of gear and like doing everything right. But I do think that the gains you're going to make, especially after your like initial phase, the first six months to a year where like, as long as you're consistent, you're pushing reasonably hard, you're going to see a bunch of progress fairly easily. And then after that, I think that you're going to be in a perpetual state of plateau and then short bursts of growth. If you're actually doing something with your training and to change your training and not just keep doing the same shit. And I think conceptually, based on what I've seen, it's better to think about it that way as in like, my body will respond pretty quickly to a concrete increase in the demand I put on it with my workouts by, like I said before, increasing the weight, changing the tempo, adding more volume, reducing the rest, whatever it may be, whatever adjustment you can make, where now all of a sudden it's like, holy, my workout is more demanding. My workout is more difficult. Your body's going to respond very quickly. That's what I've seen. Um, and then you're going to kind of slide into another plateau unless you keep amping it up over and over again. Maybe there's a discussion where you like, at least in my case here, I amp it up to this extreme arms, three days, then legs repeat. And maybe it would be better to sit in that even after, let's say a month or two, I've made some progress and I'm just plateaued there. It might be good to stay there for a month or whatever, to let your body like adapt to that before you add the next thing. I don't really know. I'm not looking too far ahead. I'm just trying to carve out this last little sliver to get to the 18s and then we'll fucking reassess and, and see what bananas fucking shit comes after that. Cause I don't really know because things are getting pretty absurdly extreme at this point. And um, it would have been interesting to have started this series like three years ago. So you guys could see like the slow, gradual progression to this point um, instead of just kind of like the last bit, which I stated, I think in one of the first episodes that it could still take months, right? Like I may not be able to find the, the right mixture of training and, and have everything line up in my life and be able to do all the recovery and everything to get that growth that could take like months or it could take, you know, a week, a couple of weeks, which again is like going to sound crazy, but that's just what I've seen. And so I wanted to put that little nugget into your brain to think about with your own training to hopefully um, help you uh, progress your own fucking muscle gains. And yeah, the plan is the next three days to bring the camera with me to good life where I can film and film each one of my three sessions that are all a little bit different. So we're taking you guys along for that. Stay fucking tuned. Road to 18s, baby. We're coming. We're going to get it. We're going to fucking get it. Thanks for watching. Have yourself a great goddamn night.